Hey friends, in today's video is another stream question. This is a popular one I get all the time. It's something along the lines of, Hey Cam, I just started playing the game and need to know if I should be spending my time on controller or mouse and keyboard. What is the more competitive input device? And the answer in Destiny is that both input devices are balanced pretty competitively against each other. So long term, you should plan to build a team composition around having both or you should be able to competently play both. So the advantages for playing controller, right here, got the hand cam on, is better tracking, adhesion, which means the reticle sticks to your opponent during a chaotic screen. Like let's say I dodge and you see how disruptive this looks. If I was using a traditional hand cannon, let's say aim down sights in this mess, and have somebody walk past that red crosshair, it'll latch onto them. As long as I am either moving myself, you see how it latches on when I'm moving, barely tensioning the stick? But if I'm not touching the stick and they move, nothing happens. See how that works? And the same thing is for the right stick. If I barely tension this during red reticle and move with my other character, so watch, I'm gonna barely tension this up and move forward and it's automatically going to track. So with a tracking weapon, like an auto rifle, you can use that to your advantage in this type of lighting system. By the way, Bungie made a big L changing the lighting system way back in the day. You can do the same with the sniper rifle too, where you don't even know if an opponent's there, but if you see the crosshair move on its own, just pull the trigger. The next thing is you can have an intentionally slow strafe speed so that you can purposely use your walk to aim better on your opponent. Whereas on mouse and keyboard, I just swapped to it. I'll hold the mouse for posterity here. You get to your absolute fastest strafe speed with just the tap of the button. It does not have to ramp up. So that is both a benefit and a curse for a controller because you don't have technically as fast of a side to side strafe. Uh, so the final thing would be that controller in this game is built different, MK is built different, and they trend to benefit from certain weapons more than the other. On controller, for example, controllers typically associated with sidearms, auto rifles, trace rifles, snipers, and fusion rifles. Whereas on MK, MK trends towards traditional hand cannons, shotties, snipers, grenade launchers scout rifles while floating in the air, and the no time to explain pulse rifle. On mouse and keyboard, let's talk about the benefits of this. You have better flicks, better hip fire registration. Let's just see if I can even hit one of these on controller. Because controller has inherently worse hip fire. Yeah, it's fine there. I'm sure if I bloom it out a little bit, you can actually see the crosshair change when I change each input device, depending on the type of aim assist and accuracy cone. Mouse and keyboard is natively always more accurate, meaning the bullets shoot straight, but maybe they don't bend as much. Uh, for sake of explaining a difficult concept, I'm oversimplifying it. Another thing mouse and keyboard does, the instant backslide. So if I'm trying to create space from my free-to-play account here, just sprint backwards, reslide. That is worth its weight in gold on mouse and keyboard. Even in the sense of you peek, see the red light district from the sniper rifle, just slide back into cover. Very, very simple maneuver. Uh, what else do we have? We have scroll wheel skating. In the case of Hunter, if you use your scroll wheel on your jump, it's silent on your opponent's screen. I can't really show you what that uh, sounds like. We reposition so free to play doesn't get kicked. Uh, the bottom line with mouse and keyboard is you have deliberate aim, which is why if you ever use a grenade launcher, it makes way more sense. Because if you get that adhesion, right, just switch to controller, move around. If you get that adhesion, it might drag your grenade launcher when you're trying to bank it off the wall to catch a jumping hunter, fight a different teammate, that type of thing. Uh, the next thing to know is the mobility stat is very important when you're fighting against controllers because if your strafe isn't fast enough, you cannot break their adhesion. So I will try to demonstrate that the best I can, but I might fail here. 
because I'm again playing two controllers at once. Let me walk a little bit forward just so we can we can see this. So I want to barely tension the stick upward and then I'm just going to walk to the left as quick as possible. You see how that breaks away from adhesion? Now I'm going to try to slow walk. So barely up tensioning, slow walk. You see, if I had a, a lower mobility stat, they stay adhered for a while. But if I have a really fast strafe, like Peacekeepers on Titan or Plan 10 Mobility Hunter, that type of thing, you can break their adhesion, which means they have to deliberately aim at you. And that's hard to do on a plastic stick. Anything else? Uh, let's go with the traditionals, the exceptions, actually. So exceptions to the rule. Usually, hipfire is better on mouse and keyboard. I'm on mouse right now. But the last word, it does bend bullets. That'll count as a headshot, right? And then switch to controller. Oh, maybe not. Hipfire is a little worse. Let's just say last word is a tracking weapon. And so since controller benefits from tracking weapons, last word's better on controller. And it honestly mitigates flinch a lot better too. So the last word is a controller weapon. It doesn't mean that it's unusable a mouse and keyboard, but as soon as you get hit by an opponent using a high impact hand cannon, like igneous hammer, something like that, time payload, whatever, you're never going to land a shot. A weapon that is good on both devices is crimson, but it's better on controller for the wrong reasons. If I take this ornament off, you're going to see that the gun model kind of recoils into itself. You cannot see the red dot, yet the bullets will register even though you cannot see what you're shooting at on mouse and keyboard. So what you have to do to make this playable is switch ornaments. That's a much cleaner sight picture, especially if I fight the recoil on the down pool. And what a lot of MNK players do is they have this windshield wiper type aim where they pull off the opponent to see visual and then reflick back onto him. That's what makes hand cannons so strong. In the case of Crimson, though, by down tensioning the right stick, it doesn't matter if you cannot see your opponent. The adhesion is going to do the work for you. And the recoil on some weapons on controller feels better, whereas the recoil on some weapons feels better on mouse and keyboard. I would say that the bad juju pulse rifle feels better on controller recoil-wise. And then I would say, no time to explain, Pulse Rifle is good on both, but it feels like a completely different animal on mouse and keyboard. So if I had to explain it, last word, controller weapon. Crimson, controller weapon, but MNK can use it. Ace of Spades is definitely a mouse and keyboard weapon. The recoil on controller is crazy by comparison. Let's just shoot a wall real quick. Uh, let's put full auto fire on. And then walk it over, controller time. Controller's a lot more unwieldy, take my word on that. And then finally we have Sturm, which is a beast on either input device. This is amazing. Controller players and M and K uh, players will tell you, let me get to a longer site here so it bends the bullet. I really, really try to bend it here. There we go. Doesn't really matter what input device you're on. It's still going to bend the bullets like that. So, Sturm is a weapon that benefits both input devices. I think SMGs also fall into that category, but the role changes depending on if you're using controller software that is not allowed in the game, but they don't really punish for it. Uh, depending on that, and if you have an anti-recoil script, is probably going to determine whether or not you value stability on a gun. On mouse and keyboard, even with all the nerfs to stability stat, it's pretty free. SMG control is pretty free on mouse and keyboard. On controller, though, you will notice it is way harder to stay on target when they're moving around and whatnot. It's still possible, though, but when you compare it to, let's say, a max stability variant, it is so much easier on controller. This thing doesn't move at all. You don't even need to pull the right stick down. You can TTK them at ridiculous distances without even touching the right stick. That's pretty crazy.
But again, if, if you're cheating, essentially, then yeah, you, you know what you're doing to get an advantage because you're probably not that good at the game. It is what it is. If Bungie didn't ban for it, though, I completely understand why you'd use any advantage available to you. I get it. I'm a competitive gamer, too. I play fighting games. Uh, but, uh, any anything else here? Uh, my point with this one is that SMGs are competitive on both input devices, but there's some subtleties on what role you go for. The final one is jumping in the air. If I switch to my Warlock character, pop a ability called Heat Rises that lets me float, and I just jump all over the place, I'm going to have a significantly easier time doing this on mouse and keyboard at extreme distances. Because controller is all about this red reticle. As soon as you get outside of this red reticle, at least uh, what would be the red reticle while you aim down sights, there are some dynamic sights, like let's say the Shayuro's Wrath, that will give you some of that information. But as you get outside of the sweet spot of these cones, you're going to find that when you jump in the air and also shoot at your opponent, um, remember I'm supposed to be on Dawnblade, when you're really far away, jump in the air and shoot at your opponent, it's going to be hard for these bullets to register on controller and or you just have too hard of a time aiming. Whereas on mouse and keyboard, I'm not trying to uh, exaggerate here, but it feels like a point and click adventure on mouse and keyboard compared to controller. That didn't even count as a head. I think on MK it would have bent the bullet. All right, let's get free to play account over here while I do my closing notes. So my closing notes is no scrub mentality. You chose the input device for a variety of reasons. Don't make excuses on behalf of the other. Does that mean I don't think there should be input based matchmaking? No, not necessarily. I think it's okay if you wanna only play controllers. If you want that experience though, you could always play console. That is why I would, that's why I picked up controller. I compartmentalize my controller loadouts like Rat King. And when I don't want to deal with backsliding all the time, I just go play on console. It's very simple. Okay, this has a dynamic crosshair. See? See when it lights up red? So every gun does that. It's just this is the only one that visually shows you that. When you're outside of this range on controller, this right here is going to feel significantly more difficult to hit your target than this. So that's what you need to be thinking about as a controller player. So other tips is when I play controller, I play five sensitivity and sometimes I bump it up to eight, but I am significantly slower on controller. So what this actively changes in the game is if I use something like blink, my approach to take out an opponent is completely different. Instead of blinking at them like this and doing a 180, sometimes I'll do the 180 before I even show myself and blink backwards like this so I'm already pre-aimed at them. So that's how I compensate for a lower sensitivity. Another thing is mouse and keyboard has much more favorable binds. So on controller, I have to do these combo binds where right bumper is my charge melee and then I do bumper plus a paddle to do a uh, uncharge or vice versa, depending on what I what I need to get done in the moment. On Arc Strider though, speaking of Arc Strider, I do the auto melee function and then disable both of these. Uh, let's just do it like I normally would. We'll play Golden Gun with Throwing Knife. That's gonna take a while to charge. But on mouse and keyboard, you can have completely different buttons for this. You can have two different binds for each melee type thing. I'll show you what that looks like. So my melees, where are we at? Charged melee, uncharged melee. Yeah, I have two for uncharged, one for charged, and then this uncharged shares my sword block. So yeah, you can use two of the same binds on different things. I switch with scroll wheel. I play on a keypad, which also has a scroll wheel, so that's that's definitely a hardware advantage. Uh, you can check out all of my peripherals with the Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Uh, finally, let's go show the bind. Regular melee, combo bind. Oh, you know what? Since I'm thinking about it, some abilities function differently on controller. I would say that the throwing knife is a lot more forgiving on controller 
for what registers as a headshot. Whereas on mouse and keyboard, the advantage is you can quickly flick to where that needs to go and you can do this. You can cancel the toss by tapping your uh, super button. I just have to not be in mayhem to do so. So maybe I will load this up while I continue my closing thoughts. I could also show you the floating warlock, but you got to take my word for it. I wanted this to be a comprehensive video, not exactly a short and sweet one, because if I don't make it comprehensive, there's going to be way too much arguing when this is some cold, hard facts in the background. Like, you don't argue against this. This is just absolute. This is how it is in Destiny. You don't make excuses. You play the better input device for you. And when you lose to the opposite input device, that's on you for not playing both. Or for not choosing the right team composition. Or the loadout. This is one thing you don't make an excuse on. Both are competitive enough. Let's see if I can do this here. There we go. So, if I queue this up and see it's not going to be a good night, hit your super. Cancels it out. Another thing about mouse and keyboard is I can flick the correct target at the last second. Controller does not have that level of sensitivity and precision to be able to do that. Uh, final thing is I will talk about a couple more mouse and keyboard outliers in the form of trace rifles. All the trace rifles feel great on controller, but there's one trace rifle that feels incredible on mouse and keyboard, and that is Prometheus Lens. So that's yet another example of things acting differently. So let me know in the comments section what you think a mouse and keyboard exclusive gun is and what you think a controller exclusive gun is. Or maybe a couple options that you think are equal on both. I'm curious to hear what you all think. Another one I think that can go either way is Vex Mythoclass. I'm going to keep talking. I honestly think bows are pretty equal on both as well. Yeah, I'm just going to keep talking if I don't stop myself. So I'll see you all in the next one. I hope this answered the age-old question of what is the better input device, and you got my answer. I'm going to repeat it one more one more time for posterity. The answer is you play the best input device for you and stop making excuses. Just learn both. I appreciate you all uh, letting me do this type of video, understand a little bit of sarcasm here and there. You all are the best. Take care.